so now that we know about the basic attributes and properties of materials let's start having a look at how we play them together with one another in order to get realistic looking items and renders the first step towards doing this is observing the principle of energy conservation or reciprocity what this basically means is that you can't get back more than was put in originally that is simple conservation specifically what it means is if you have an amount of light falling on a surface as we have here just some amount of light the surface cannot reflect back either through specular reflection or diffuse reflection or anything else more light than originally hit the surface if you take a flashlight and you shine it at a wall the wall will never light up brighter than the surface of the flashlight it's clearly impossible at least unless the wall happens to have some kind of light built into it which can also be turned up to emit additional light so what does this mean in practice then when setting up our surfaces well it means that we need to keep certain parameters balanced for instance here we have this funny looking little thing and as you can see he's got a rather attractive blue color and at the minute he's 100 percent diffuse he's not giving any kind of specular reflection or he's got no transparency or anything else if we give him some reflection let's say 100 percent then he looks okay but he also looks a little bit washed out i mean you look at the reflections here and the color of them as opposed to the color of the background that we have you know clearly behind him here we can look for instance i don't know at the color of the sky it's you know i mean that's a paler blue and now this is a much more saturated blue over here why well because he's colored blue and although in you know certain ways he looks quite good he doesn't look quite right and the reason for this is the fact that he is not energy conserving in his surface his surface is not behaving reciprocally why well because he is returning to us a hundred percent of the light that fell on him as diffuse and a hundred percent of the light that fell on him as reflection mirror reflection this can't happen because it means that 100 percent of light is falling on him and 200 percent of light is coming back away from him thus if we want him to have 100 percent total reflection he must have zero diffuse and this is true of materials in the physical world anything that has a 100 percent total pure specular reflection will have zero diffuse that doesn't mean that the reflection itself cannot be colored as we spoke about in regard to metals in the specular video but that coloration is not diffuse reflection of course if we want this guy to not be completely totally reflective he should have a bit of both then these attributes should add up to 100 percent so perhaps diffuse at 50 and reflection at 50. of course this weakens his reflections but it strengthens his diffuse color and we have a level of illumination on our fellow that is more consistent with the backdrop or the environment that he is in diffuse in reflection or diffuse in specular is the most common place where you play this off but it does also come in other places for instance what if in addition to being diffuse and reflective he also has i don't know let's say 50 percent transparency so he's you know partially transparent as well well once again he is too bright why because light is falling on him and passing through due to his transparency but it's also reflecting off him both as specular reflection and diffuse reflection you see let's make it a bit simpler let's just kill the diffuse let's take the reflection up to 100 percent and the transparency up to 100 percent see how incredibly bright he now is completely wrong reason why because 100 percent of the light that is falling on him is passing through him and 100 percent of it is being reflected off him he is essentially doubly lit and so these parameters should also be balanced out so perhaps 50 percent reflection 50 percent transparency once again we get something that starts to look a good deal more realistic because when light strikes his surface half of it penetrates and half of it is bounced off as a reflection now what you will find with materials in lightwave is there are different ways of accounting for these energy conservation issues and it varies from material to material 
We will of course see those in due course as we get on later into the training and we'll look at them specifically. But what you will find is that some materials, such as the standard that we are using here, do not themselves enforce any kind of energy conservation or reciprocity. Other materials, for instance here Sigma, have it built in automatically. So even though you'll notice that I have a diffuse weight of 100%, as I increase the specular weight, the diffuse is automatically reduced until the point where I reach 100% specular. And as we see, there is no longer any diffuse reflection. As such, in those materials that do not have the attribute reciprocity built into them, you will ideally wish to create it and make sure that you put the settings correctly for your surfaces if you want them to come out looking photorealistic or you will of course have the option to violate the energy conservation rules if you wish to create some unusual and strange looking surface. Whereas those that do have these effects built in will do it all for you and give you proper photorealistic materials. Either way, it is important to be aware of the effect so that you can create it when needed or so that when you encounter a material that has it built in, you don't wonder why when you've got the diffuse weight at 100 here, there is no colour to be seen. And so that is the principle of energy conservation and how observing it helps our surfaces to render more realistically and work with the environments and the other objects that exist within our scenes.